Previously, we elaborated on bubble sort and selection sort. We understood why they are a quadratic algorithm with a symptotical complexity of order of n square. In this video, we will look into another algorithm which is also quadratic, but usually it gives us a much better performance. The insertion sort. Welcome to Code Station. We have all played cards before. What is the first thing that we do when we collect the cards in our hands? Well, we sort them in such a manner that we can find the card that we're looking for. Have you thought about the algorithm we use? Usually people use the insertion sort. Let's say these are the cards that we have in our hand and we want to sort them in an ascending order. Here, the card on the left, the 10 of diamonds, is represented as the zeroth element in the array. Similarly, the card on the right, the 4 of diamonds, is represented as the 7th element in the array. Obviously, there are 8 cards. How do we sort it? Well, we will begin by placing the 3 of diamonds from index 2 to index 0 and shift the cards 10 of diamonds and queen of diamonds one position to the right. Then we will place 2 of diamonds to index 0, shifting the cards until index 2 to their right. We will then place 7 of diamonds to index 2, shifting the 10 and the queen to the right position. Similarly, the 6 of diamonds will be placed at index 2. The 8 of diamonds will be placed right after the 7 of diamonds at index 4. Then finally, the 4 of diamonds, which was originally in the 7th index, will be moved to index 2. This will give us the sort list of cards. We went through this pretty quickly. Let's revisit the sort technique in more details. Let's begin with our initial unsorted list of cards. We will begin at position 1. Let's assign the card in this position as 10th value. So our 10th value is the Queen of Diamonds. In our iterations, we will compare the 10th value with the values of the cards before this position. Here, there is only one card before 10th value. This is smaller than the 10th value. Therefore, we don't do anything. We put the 10th value back to position 1. As a side note, we conducted one iteration to figure out correct position for the card at index 1. Then, we move on to position 2. Again, we assign this card as the temp value. In our iterations, we will first compare the temp value with the card at index 2. Clearly, the temp value, the 3 of diamonds, is smaller than the queen of diamonds. Therefore, we will shift the queen of diamonds from index 1 to index 2, that is, one spot to the right. At the same time, we will advance to the next iteration and compare the element at the 0th index to the temp value. Again, the index 0 element is greater than the temp value card. Thus, we shift the 10 of diamonds one spot to the right. There is no more cards that we can compare. Thus, the temp value card would occupy the empty space at index 0. At index 2, we did two iterations to make sure that the cards are sorted until that position. Then, we move on to position 3. The 2 of diamonds will be the temp value. We will start iterations by comparing the temp value with the cards at indices 2, 1, and 0. We will realize that each of these cards are greater than the temp value, and therefore each of them gets shifted a spot to the the right. The temp value card, that is 2 of diamonds, gets placed at the vacant position, the 0th index. Thus, when we are at position 3, we conducted 3 iterations of comparisons. Moving on to position 4, we will see something interesting. Again, the temp value is the card at position 4. We start iterating at index 3. Is that card at index 3 greater than temp value? Yes. So we shift the card at index 3 one spot to the right. We do the same thing for the next iteration. We will shift the 10 of diamonds from index 2 to index 3. At the same time, we move on to the next iteration at index 1. We realize that the card at index 1 is smaller than temp value. Therefore, we don't need to shift the card at index 1 to index 2. Also, note that we don't need to do any further iterations for this temp value. This is because we already have a sorted list of cards till position 3. Therefore, if the card at index 1 is smaller than temp value, we know for sure that cards at indices before index 1 one are all smaller than temp value. There is a vacant spot at index 2. Temp value gets placed at this spot such that the cards until index 4 are all sorted. Moving on to position 5, we do the same steps. 
temp value gets placed at index 2. Then we move on to position 6 and conduct 3 iterations with comparisons and place the temp value the 8 of diamond to position 4. At position 7 we conduct 6 iterations and place the 4 of diamonds to index 2. This results in the sorted list of cards. What are the key things that we did in this algorithm? Here the number of cards, let's call it n, was 8. We moved from position 1 till the n minus first which is the 7th position. For each position we iterated from position minus 1 index till the 0th index in the reverse sequence. For example at position 3 we iterated at index 2, index 1 and index 0. Similarly we stopped the iterations if the value of the card at that index was not greater than the temp value. If the value of the card was greater than the temp value, we shifted that card one spot to the right. Once the iteration is done, we put the temp value to the vacant spot that is the index at the iteration. If we were to generalize this algorithm, this algorithm would look like this. Notice how we replace the greater than comparison to a more abstract compare function. The compare function could now incorporate multiple sorting criteria, for example if the cards were of different suits. Here, the outer loop is the position loop which runs n minus 1 times. The inner loop is the iteration loop. Notice that this loop will run maximum of position times. This is the case if we need to go back all the way till the 0th index for the iteration. Similarly, the minimum time that this loop will run is 1 time. Of course, this is the case when the element at the current position is greater than the element at position minus 1. Thus, the complexity of this algorithm really depends upon the initial unsorted array. The worst possible possible case is when the array is completely unsorted, like this one here, where it is sorted in a descending order while we need to sort it in an ascending order. In this case, at position 1, we will have to do one iteration, one shift and one insertion. Similarly, at position 2, we will have to do two iterations, two shifts and one insertion. At position 3, we will have to do three iterations. At position 4, we need four iterations and thus generally speaking, at n minus 1 position we will iterate n minus 1 times. If we represent these numbers of iterations as dots like we did in our bubble sort video, we will again get a right angle triangle with height of n minus 1 and width of n minus 1. From our analysis in the bubble sort video, the number of dots in this triangle is n times n minus 1. Thus, for an array of size n, we will have to run n times n minus 1 iterations in the worst case. This means the asymptotical time complexity of insertion sort is order of n square in the worst case scenario. Similarly, if our initial array is already sorted in the order we require, we get our best possible runtime. In this case, at position 1, we compare it with index 0, realize that the value at index 0 is already smaller. Thus, we don't need to do any shift or any insertion. Similarly, at position 2, in one iteration itself, we realize that we don't need to do any shift or any insertion. Insertion. It is the same story at each of these positions. We just do one iteration. Therefore, for all n minus 1 positions, we do one iteration each. We do a total of n minus 1 iterations. This means that asymptotical time complexity of insertion sort is order of n in the best case scenario. Summarizing this, we can say that insertion sort is a quadratic or order of n square sort algorithm whose best case performance is linear, that is, order of n. In in general, whenever a sort is required, our initial array is neither fully unsorted nor fully sorted. So the time complexity of insertion sort is somewhere between the order of n square and order of n. For an almost sorted array, insertion sort time complexity goes towards order of n and is therefore much quicker than order of n square complexity of selection sort. Similarly, for an initial array that is almost completely unsorted, the performance is very close to the selection. Sort. Therefore, for an array with a small size, insertion sort is often recommended. Like we saw earlier, it is a stable algorithm and its memory overhead is quite small. We just need one temp value variable to hold the value at the current position. In the real world, a sorting algorithm switches to insertion sort when the array that needs to be sorted becomes smaller in size. For example, while using the merge sort algorithm on a larger array, the array gets divided into two subarrays. These subarrays get further divided into smaller subarrays. When the subarrays get small enough, 
insertion sort is used for these subarrays. This way, the performance of the overall algorithm would be better. Also, insertion sort is a go-to algorithm that people generally use for a lot of the sorting needs, just like the example that we saw regarding sorting of the cards. As good as it is for small datasets, a order of n square algorithm is not practical for large datasets in the real world. I will let you refer to the videos of bubble sort and selection sort to understand why. Luckily, there are sort algorithms whose worst case time complexity is order of n log n. Some of these sort algorithms are the topic of discussion for our upcoming videos. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, concerns, or any comments, please let me know. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, please like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.